excuse me, to be here this morning, see some folks I hadn't seen for a while. I tell you, for a child of God not coming to church, it's just not right. <laughs> it's just not right, and it just feels good to be back uh, in, in this sanctuary. I want us to think this morning upon a subject that the Lord impressed upon me early after Mark called. And this is the subject. From hope to assurance. From hope to assurance. Now, every time I ever try to put a title on a message, this story comes to mind. I heard a preacher say this one time. He was in a class in seminary. And the subject was about preaching, both orally and also writing out their sermon. So the professor told them, said, okay, <clears throat> we're going to do it this way. We're going to have you write out a sermon, and then I'm going to grade it. And then the next week, you're going to preach that sermon, and I'm going to grade that. And we're going to see how that compares. Well, the pastor said that he wrote out his sermon, got it back, <clears throat> not so good a grade, and he met with the professor, and the professor said, well, here's the deal. You did a good job, really, but your title was so weak. You've got to really develop a title for your sermon that just gets people. He said, for instance, you need a title like if you put it on the marquee, of your church a sign and a bus stopped by that everybody would on that bus would read that title and just run into the church wanting to hear the sermon. He said, okay, go back and change the title before he preached it. So he got up in the next class and he was one of the first ones to preach and he said, I, I'm going to bring a message today with the title there's a bomb on your bus. <laughs> you know. So getting a title is not always the easiest thing. But I want you to turn in your Bible with me, <clears throat> if you will, to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, which is such a familiar scripture. Most of us could quote it. And I want us to <clears throat> think this morning about the year that has just passed, how we can move from hope to assurance. <clears throat> and who would have ever guessed this time last year, the last Sunday in the year, that we would face what we're facing. No one would have ever anticipated that the next new year would bring a church that was having to go online. But few people could come. Whoever could have anticipated such a disease that we are dealing with. Whoever could have anticipated a lot of the uproar and violence in the streets and rioting in the streets that we've seen this year, something that we probably hadn't seen since the 60s. In our country also went through a, a change, an, a, an election where you've seen members of families go against each other and people argue and get all uh, really befriending people because of just what they thought. It's a tough year. And in that, we have heard, or I have, the word hope used a lot. And naturally we should. A hope, a vaccine, a sign of hope. A hope that we could possibly come together and, and unite as one. A hope. But I want to talk to you this morning about more than a hope, an assurance. Listen to what Paul wrote. To the Romans, he said this, and we know, we know 
that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. One verse, that's all I'm going to read and be seated. We know in 2020 now, we know that all things work together for good to those that are called according to his purpose. So the year 2020, let me tell you, God is going to take it and use it for good for those that are called according to his purpose, for those of us who or profess him as our Savior. There will be good out of COVID. There will be good out of social strife and injustice. There will be good come out of arguments and debates that we've seen this year. Because Paul said all things work together. All things. Now I want us to think about this concept of going from hope to assurance. Because there are things that we can be assured of. Not just have a hope of. And the first one, Mark almost started preaching our sermon a little bit there and now. I thought somehow God's giving him an insight. I want you to think about this assurance. First assurance that goes beyond hope is simply this. And we know it. We've heard it. A lot of us since we were children in Sunday school. But I want us to think this morning and try to get our minds around the fact that we can be assured that God loves us. That God loves us. Well, preacher, I've heard that since I was in Sunday school. I got up and sung, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I've already, I've known that all along. But yet sometimes that gets lost. Sometimes we get accustomed to that. And sometimes we don't stop and realize the enormity of that statement. And then it's not a hope that God loves me. It's an assurance that God loves me. That's that's almost so large that it's hard to imagine that just me and you, here we are in Knoxville, Tennessee, and amongst all of the things that has happened this year, you mean God really loves me? Yes, he does. And there may be people out there watching on on Facebook that you may not go to church. You may never come in this building. But you're watching today for some reason. I know the reason. God's got you there. And I want to tell you, and I want to assure you that God loves you. I don't care where you are, what you've done, what's going on in your life, God loves you. Callahan Road Baptist Church member, guess what? God loves you. And we can be assured of that. We can be assured that he loves us so much. No wonder Paul wrote that he does all things for good to those that love the Lord. But he does that because he loves us. And we can walk out of here today no matter what we're facing out there, to know that God loves us. Things can change in a hurry. You know, I I thought of this, and I I started not to say it, but I'm going to. Uh, The last time I walked into this building, there was a gentleman up here leading singing. I'm sorry, I I know, but i got to say it. Joe Thorgan, he meant a whole lot to me. And I never thought when I left that service that I wouldn't see him up here again. But let me tell you, God loves in Joe Thorgan. God loves that family. 
and God loves us. God loves Laura's family and all they're going to go through after having lost a mother and now a sister. God still loves us. You say, I don't understand why. But let me tell you, it's not necessarily for me to understand why. I'll understand. I'll worry about that when I get to heaven. Okay? Right now, I can be assured God loves me. The second thing I can be assured of, not just a hope of, but be assured of, is that God is still in the saving business. Still in the business of saving souls. He sent his son Jesus. I can be assured of that. He died on a cross. He rose from the dead. I can be assured that he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me and you this very moment. God is still in the saving business. Folks, I don't have to, and you don't have to answer the question that I hear so many times when you ask somebody, are you going to go to heaven? What do you hear a lot? I hope so. Mm. Mm. When I hear that, that just tears at me. Because we go from hope to assurance. It's not a matter of I hope so. Folks, if you have done what here in Romans, later on in the next couple of chapters, Paul talks about, if you whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me tell you, that's not a hope. That is an assurance. And again, I don't know your heart. Meaning, I don't know who's watching. You may not know Jesus. In you, and one of the things that, you know, Mark, one of his terms that I really like is the, about knowing Jesus on whose terms. You may have tried to meet Jesus on your terms. That's not it. That's not the assurance. The assurance is when I believe in my heart, when I admit that I'm a sinner and confess that with my mouth and ask him to come into my heart. And then I can be assured. You know, anytime you've ever pastored a church or whatever, you always run into situations where somebody's going to come up and say that they're not sure whether they've been saved or not. Okay, that's, that's not unusual. And basically when someone does that to me, I'll go to Romans chapter 10 and I'll read those few verses and I'll say, did you do that? And if they say yes, that's bottom line. You're assured if you've done what the scripture says to accept Christ. If you haven't, you need him. So this morning... I want you to think, have you done that? Because again, I don't know who we're talking to. I don't even know the hearts of the, you know, I know everybody here, but I don't know your heart. You can be assured that God loves you and be assured that you're going to heaven and walk around with that assurance. That's a wonderful way to live. That is the way God intended it for us to live. He loves us so much. As a matter of fact, if you were to read a little further in these verses in chapter 8, you will see that Paul begins to talk about what can separate me from this love. And he goes and he gives several examples of things that he's saying in tribulation or pestilence or, or let's make it modern today, COVID or, 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 or social injustice or whatever. Can any of those things separate me from this love? Absolutely not. He said this. He said, for I am persuaded. And you can substitute the word assurance there for persuaded just easy. He said, for I have assurance that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Wow. He loves me. I'm assured of that. He saved me. I've got a home in heaven. I'm assured of that. There's another couple of things I want us to think about, though, that we can be assured of, that we can go beyond hope 
to assurance. And the next one is what most of you all have in your hand right now. Many of you, I hope you've got it open at home. I can be assured that God's Word is true. I can have not just the hope, well, okay, you, you know, preacher, you, you've read what Paul said. Well, I sure hope that Paul's right. No. You see, Paul was not just sitting down deciding he's going to write an essay or something. He was led by the Holy Spirit of God. Every word here in this infallible book I can be assured of is true. I don't have to hope it's true. I can be assured that God put it there for me and you to use, to trust upon. Oh, there's a lot of promises there, isn't there? I can be assured those promises are true. God will never leave me or forsake me, right? What a great promise. I don't have to hope that's true. I can be assured that's true. I don't care where I'm at and what's happened in my life. I can be assured because God's Word tells me that. In the times that are difficult, I can know. Too many folks nowadays look for other answers other than where the answer is, which is in God's Word. Now think about it. So far, last Sunday in the year, oh, we need some hope. We need some hope. We've got some assurance. God loves me. God's got a home in heaven for me. And while I am here, He has got directions on how to live, how to die, and what all comes in between for me to know and be assured this is true. You see, our world looks around for answers, don't they? Now, you know, I'm going to tell you, and I think you already know this, that regardless in this country of what happened in November, that's not the folks who have the answers. <laughs> Not either side or in the middle, wherever you want to call it. Oh, it comes around and when, you know, administrations change from one group to the other, it's always, oh, well, we offer this hope. This new person's going to offer this hope. They may offer hope, but they sure can't give me assurance. Like God's Word can give me assurance for the days that lie ahead. God's Word teaches me how to deal with years like 2020 and how to deal with the effects of that. And then another thing that we can be assured of, not hope, but be assured of, is that God's church will prevail. Not even the gates of hell can prevail against the church of God. Now when I'm saying church, obviously don't, it, you know, it does include Callahan, but I'm not just talking about Callahan. I'm talking about the body of believers, those who have accepted Christ as their Savior. The church will prevail. The church will stand. And no matter how many attacks, and we've seen attacks in 2020. We've seen attacks before against the church, but let me tell you, God's church will be standing at the end. And people may attack you as a member of God's church. Persecution, I can tell you that's another assurance <laughs> that you're going to have, is that you're going to get persecuted. That's what God's Word says, right? We should expect it. When you go out and you walk in your everyday life, there will be persecution. Some of it you'll see going on and some of it you might not even see is happening. But it's happening. But it won't prevail. God's church will remain standing. God's church will prevail. 
you're at home today and thinking, well, what, I tell you, 2020 has really been an assault against the church because here we are at home and we don't even feel safe getting out, much less going to church. Okay. That's not for long. That's not for long. The assurance is God's church will prevail. And I want to give you just one more. Hope to assurance. And that is this. You can be assured that Jesus Christ is coming back. Hmm. That's an assurance. That's not a hope. No, that's not a hope. And I know you might mention that. And people say, oh, we've heard that for years and years and years. We've heard this story. Well, so did the folks who drowned in the flood when Noah built an ark. As a matter of fact, the scripture says what? It will be as in the days of Noah. Folks, let me tell you. As bad as 2020 has been, we may not see 2021. And you know what? That's okay. Because we can have the assurance that Jesus is coming back someday. And it could be now. It could be next week. It could be the time when Jesus gets up from that sitting at the Father's right hand and goes to get his children, his church. That's an assurance, folks. That's not just hope. That's not just a, a fairy tale. That's not just a story. That's assurance out of God's Word that we can live by to know Jesus is coming back. And if you're out there watching on Facebook, let me tell you, Jesus is coming back. It's important for you and me to be Ready. Ready. Because I'd love to see everybody have this assurance. Okay? Not just hope. Assurance. God loves you. Assurance that you've got a home in heaven. Assurance that this word that you read and you come to Sunday school and hear it taught and you come and hear it preached is true. Assurance that the church will prevail. And assurance that Jesus Christ is coming back. Now let's think about 2021. I don't know what's going to happen and you don't either. But I'll tell you that 2021 will be a whole lot different for you if you grasp on to these assurances. If you live your life knowing God loves you, got a home in heaven, Jesus is coming back. Oh, preacher, that seems so simple. That I've heard that all along. I've heard that. Folks, I know you've heard it. But let me tell you, it can make a difference in your life and in the way you live and the way you work and what you do at home and whatever you do if you're assured of these facts. Wow. An assurance. An assurance of what we read at the beginning of this message. All things. All things. Work together. For the good, to those who love the Lord, to those who were called according to his purpose. And I am persuaded, as Paul said, that nothing can separate me from the love of God. That will change your life. It will change the way you approach 2021. Even though we, the awfulness we've seen in 2020, I want you to leave, and I want you, when you turn this program off, I want you to know you have that assurance. Now, you may be at home. Jared, Mark, want to come? 
we're going to have a moment of invitation. You say, well, most of us are watching this. Okay, that's fine. Because you can be assured of these things wherever you're at. If you're on your sofa or in your pajamas, doesn't matter. God loves you. Jesus died for your sins. God's word is true. And he's coming back. Now, are you assured of that? Are you assured that you're going to heaven? Well, you can be. If you're at home or even if you're here, and you realize, you know, I, I'm not living my life like I'm assured of these things. Well, you know, you're missing out on what life's all about then. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in what he's done and confess your sins and ask him to come into your life. And let me tell you, if, you're, if you've done that and you're at home on Facebook, you pray right there and you let somebody know. Call me, call Mark, call any, call uh, Mike, Carlos, or anybody else. But that's all you have to do because it's that simple and be assured. Now, the group that concerns me now is all of us because we're losing the cohesiveness of being together. And it is real simple if we're not careful to backslide a bit. Because we're not together. But you know, I, I heard this a few weeks ago. And it was a response by a guy by the name of Max Lucado, which most of you probably know. And they were asking him about the pronounce whatever the governor of California used, the executive order or whatever, to not allow people to congregate. And it included the church. People were all upset, and, and, and rightfully so. But Max Lucado said this, Before we get upset, let us remember that the work of the church, most of it's outside of the walls anyway. And maybe God's trying to get our attention. That that's where the work is anyway. And for you at home, that's where the work is, right there where you're at. And where you go, and what you say, and how much of the assurance you have in what we've talked about today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Father, we thank you so much that we can have more than just a hope, that we can have an assurance in that you love us. We can be assured that we're going to heaven. And we pray right now for those who might not have that assurance. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to them wherever they're at, Father. And let them know, hey, I can be assured I'm going to heaven. I can walk with that glory of this assurance that I know that I know where I'm going. that we can look forward to your return. Father, we pray that those who are listening today would allow the Spirit to speak to their